Welcome to the Kohlberg, Gilligan, and Moral Development Lesson Series. This video will cover Lawrence Kohlberg's Moral Development Theory. Lawrence Kohlberg was born on October 25, 1927 in Bronxville, New York. He attended the University of Chicago and completed his PhD in psychology by the age of 31. His dissertation was inspired by the work of Jean Piaget's Theory of Cognitive Development. Kohlberg based his research into the moral choices of adolescent boys by recording their responses to male protagonist dilemmas. These studies influenced the development of his theory on the stages of moral development. In 1959, Kohlberg joined the staff of Yale University as an assistant professor of psychology. The remainder of his career was spent as a professor of education and social psychology at Harvard University between 1968 until his death in 1987 at the age of 59. Kohlberg's theory of moral development is presented in three levels and six stages. We are going to visualize the stages as steps because Kohlberg believed that you could not advance to a higher stage before mastering the initial stage. The first is a pre-conventional level of moral reasoning. In this first level, the individual's self-interests are considered. This is a common level for individuals who have not yet understood right from wrong, where direct consequences drive decision making. The second is the conventional level of moral reasoning. In this second level, the rules and norms of society are considered. The moral reasoning in this level can be associated with teenagers and adults. Individuals obey rules and observe society's views and expectations. The third is the post-conventional level. In this third level, an individual's perspective takes priority over the perceptions of society. Rules are broken when it comes to life, liberty, and justice. According to Kohlberg, not many individuals reach the latter stage of moral development because it's difficult to step out of the norms of law and order. Most individuals will actually stay at stage four. Let's look at the pre-conventional morality level consisting of stages one and two. Stage one, obedience and punishment. The child is motivated to avoid punishment and has little or no independent moral reasoning. An example, we're going to be looking at Bobby as he progresses through each of the six stages. The teacher tells Bobby, Bobby, you didn't get your reading log signed by your parents yesterday. Teacher, I told my parents to sign it, but they forgot. I'm giving you one more chance to get it signed. If it's not signed, you will get a color change on your folder. Bobby makes sure his parents sign his reading log because he doesn't want a color change. Stage two, individualism and exchange. Individuals are focused on fulfilling their own self-interest while acknowledging that different people have different views. Bobby arrives home after school, ready to relax. Mom, I'm going to be upstairs playing my video game. Bobby, you have to show me your finished homework before you can play your video game. Here, Bobby and his mother are experiencing an exchange. Level 2, the conventional morality level consisting of stage 3 and stage 4. Stage 3, maintaining relationships. At this stage, individuals emphasize the importance of being kind to other people, engaging in good behavior and showing concern for others. This stage includes a strong emphasis on gaining approval of others. Bobby is walking home after a gruesome basketball practice and sees another exhausted athlete sitting on the side of the gym. Hey Carlos, you waiting for your ride? Yeah, but they won't get here until another hour. Come over to my house and wait there. I live two houses down. You can eat dinner with us if you want. Here, Bobby is maintaining a good relationship with a friend. Stage four, law and order. The individual is determined to obey the rules, focusing on the value that the law adds to human life. A person at this stage might argue that breaking the law is wrong because the law is designed to protect people. In stage four, individuals will focus on maintaining the social order and upholding cultural norms. Bobby is waiting at a red light. He knows this light takes a long time to switch to green and he's running late for class. 
There's no observable traffic in either direction for miles. Bobby decides to do the right thing and wait for the light to change to green, and he will be late to class. The third level is the post-conventional morality level consisting of stage 5 and stage 6. Stage 5, Social Contract. People at this stage of development focus on doing what is best for society as a whole and respecting individual rights. Civil disobedience would be endorsed by people in both stages of post-conventional morality. Bobby has been working as a waiter at a family restaurant for several years. A customer complains to him that he wants to be reseated because there's a special needs child disturbing him. Bobby reseats the customer. The customer then goes on to say, special children need to have a special section. Bobby approaches the rude customer and tells him he will no longer serve him. Stage 6. Universal Principles At this stage, individuals are focused on upholding principles of life, liberty, and justice. They believe in the democratic process, but also endorse disobeying unjust laws. Bobby is jogging around the neighborhood and passes by the same house every afternoon. The house has a big sign on the fence, no trespassing. This morning, though, he catches a glimpse of a toddler climbing the ladder of an above-ground swimming pool. The toddler falls in, and there's no sign of an adult. Bobby decides to trespass, and he pulls the choking toddler out of the swimming pool. Let's review. Kohlberg believed and was able to demonstrate through studies that people progressed in their moral reasoning as in their basis of ethical behavior, through a series of stages. He believed that there were six identifiable stages, which could be more generally classified in three levels. He believed that individuals could only progress through these stages one at a time. That is, they could not jump stages. They could not, for example, move from obedience and punishment to the law and order stage without passing through the maintaining relationship stage first. They could only come to a comprehension of moral rationale one stage above their own. Note that Kohlberg believed, as did Piaget, that most moral development occurs through social interaction. We'll be learning about Carol Gilligan in our next video in the lesson series.